What up, what up, peace world? This is Rosewood, and you're watching the B-Shine. I grew up in a house that was pr primarily a lot of hip-hop music was played. Um, the first time I got, I heard Illmatic, it was my mother's tape. You know what I mean? And a Tribe Called Quest. All the first rap I ever heard was taking my mother's tapes and going upstairs with them. You know what I mean? So from that point on, I remember hearing Ill Ill Illmatic and I seen a picture with a little kid. I was like, this is a little kid? What is this? And she was like, just go listen to it. You like it. You know, and after that, it was like I heard the first song and it was like over. And I think from that point, I would remember certain songs like Mary, Mary, why are you bugging? Run DMC playing in the house, Slick Rick, you know, uh, certain songs. But when I played that, that was when I was like, OK, what what is this shit? And I started really going in. You know what I mean? But I became a seeker of it. Um, I wanted to always find the new music. I took pride in looking for stuff that nobody had. You know, those days when you would really go to Tower Records and you, you couldn't wait to find something you didn't know. You know, like, oh, I, I remember when the Think Differently CD came out and I was just scrolling through and I saw that. I was like, oh, shit, what is this? And um, those days I miss. You know, I know it's off the subject, but I miss those days of seeking music. I think these kids don't understand what it was like to get something early. And you open it and you're reading all the credits and you're looking at the pictures and you know, and at that point I wanted I wanted my own stuff like that. We went to a uh the survival of the fittest concert at the Apollo back on Def Jam when Def Jam had DMX and uh we we had a adult moment. They had they used to have a Def Jam van. They don't do that no more. They used to have these vans that was for promo that would drive around with speakers playing music. And it would be speakers all over the van. They have Def Jam all over it. And um, that's something they don't even do no more. And they parked the Def Jam van in front of the Apollo. And people was freestyling. And motherfucking Core Mega grabs the mic and start freestyling. And then me and my man is freestyling with Core Mega. And then like a half hour later, he gets on stage with Foxy Brown. And does the firm. I'm like, oh, shit. So, you know, like that was something dope. I had like a lot of interactions with Cash. That was ill. Like that was fly. I was battling cats. I used to go to the Mike Club. Shout out to Dredge the Beatnik, who had the original Mike Club back in the day in Atlanta at Apache Cafe. And um, I would battle cats all day. I would lose, too. Because I, I had a problem. Like, people, people when I freestyled, they would swear I was writing it. So people would say that. They, they would think I was like, you know, but I'd be freestyling. But it'd be so sharp that they was like, he can't be freestyling that shit. And I would literally lose by that reason. You know what I mean? Like, it would be like, people would look at me suspect on, I would see them like, come on, man, it's a freestyle battle, he's kicking writtens. It wouldn't be like that. But after a while, you know, I, I just kind of figured out how to rap at a person. I would just rap. Because, you know, from my era, if you was really battling somebody, you just kind of going line for line. You're trying to out-rap them. So that's what I was trying to do, rap better than him. But really, it's kind of like rapping at the person as well. So, you know, that's what I started out with, doing open mics. And, um, you know, and then as I got more music out, I was able to start throwing shows and doing my own thing. And uh, and then, and that's how it started. But I, I started on stage first. You know what I mean? Just like everybody else, you know, just getting out there, putting music. And, you know, God bless the Internet. That just gave a lot of people opportunities to be independent now. My family loved it. They When I when I had my first mixtape, I had them in my bag. I walked around with them in a bag and I went to a barbecue and my whole family bought one. I went to a barbecue and left for like $300. My whole family bought one. You know, shout to my family, the Johnsons. I love y'all. They all copped a copy and was fans. They're fans. Like, I got cousins that are older than me that listen to my shit. You know what I mean? So that means a lot when, you, when your family embrace you. You know what I mean? It was a night. It was a uh, common was performing at this club called uh, Visions in Atlanta. And he, at the end of his show, he, he got and said, hey, anybody want to get up here and freestyle? And I got up there and rhymed with Common. You know what I mean? And we're going back and forth and, you know, we freestyling. You know, he's real hip hop to the core like that. That was an ill moment. I got a lot of weird moments where I was actually in the mix, like rapping with signed dudes, you know, just by some strike of luck. I was just like able to be in this situation. It's a lot more than that. But that was a dope one because the whole club was packed. And like when I left there, it was like I was getting love and I felt like a star for a minute. Like, you know, I shared the stage with Star and I left and people was like, yo, that was dope. And then. 
you know, you get that little bit that, that, that hypes you up. You want it all the time, you know what I mean? It allows me to have that little, that piece of hope, you know what I mean, when you're pursuing music. It's always, like, for any artist, there's always, when you got that dream in, inside, you always, it's always something there. Like, so, it's like, for me, if I was just to settle down, get, like, a, a get one of these jobs and just stay there and not have music, I wouldn't know how, to, I couldn't see how I could live. You know what I mean? Knowing I have nothing else. So it's like knowing that that's always there, it it makes things a little bit sweeter. Those little victories you get from music, makes it just makes life a little bit, just a little better. Like, you know, even when it's hard, you know, I have, things aren't always the greatest, but then you have moments like this and you, it, it reassures you that you're doing the right thing. And that's the stuff that kind of, it, it gives life a little bit more purpose. It makes you a little more happier. It, you know, it's music is stressful to pursue, you know, but every time you get them little them little victories come, it's all worth it. Like I would I, all the struggle sometimes comes with music. I wouldn't trade it. I would never stop do, even though it gets hard. You know, I mean just for the victories. I just want people to be inspired. Um I got a lot of friends who do music. I got a lot of friends who don't do music. I got a lot of friends who don't do music that used to do music. You know what I mean? So when they see me out there and me i'm doing things it inspires them again or they can live through me they can say like i can't really go through music no more it's I, it passed through my system but i like to see you do it and if i if somebody hears my music and they say yo i want to do that because they heard me you know that's what I, that's the only thing i could pass down because that's what somebody did to me you know what i mean so it's like just to give somebody because i want somebody else to have that dream too you know what i mean because right now it's, it's accessible it's doable you know what I mean? It's not like before you had to like, damn, I need to get on the label. And now anybody could do it. So if you give a kid an opportunity and he says, I want to do that, he can be that artist right there. He gets a, and he could be somebody, you know what I mean? And give him an opportunity because maybe, because I think everybody needs something. That one thing that you pursue outside of life that you want to one day be your life, you know, everybody needs that. So if I can inspire somebody to have that one thing, that's great for me. You know what I mean? Work.